I welcome you for this NPTEL lecture on earthquake resistant design of formations. And this is the last lecture of this course. And as uh, you are aware that we are under the sixth module of the course. This is the last module of the course, which is miscellaneous. And under this module, today we are going to talk a very important topic that is codal provisions for earthquake resistant design of formations. Let's say this uh, the sixth module of this course that is miscellaneous items. And under this miscellaneous items, these are the different sections. We have four chapters. So the first chapter was on rock foundation numerical examples. Then in the last two lectures, we discussed cellular foundation on slopes. And today we are going to talk about codal provisions for ERDO foundations. So when we talk about codal provisions for artificial string design of foundations, we are going to discuss two codes. One is Indian Institute Code 1893, published by Bureau of Indian Standards, Part 1, published in 2016. That is the latest version of that code. And another is American Society of Civil Engineering, uh, code number 7, section 16. Let's discuss the first one, which is most relevant to us for earthquake resistance design. Then, you know that, uh, first of all, what is given in this code related to the soils or foundations that we are going to discuss. So what I'm going to discuss is basically from taken from this code only, and I'm going to explain each and every part and what is its implications. So first of all, when we talk about the design of foundations, then unfactored load shall be combined in line with other relevant Indian codes while assessing the bearing pressure in soils. So first of all, unfactored load will be. However, when earthquake forces are included, lead bearing pressure in soils can be increased as per table one, which is depending on type of foundation and type of soil. So C, uh, here it is basically uh, percentage increase in net bearing pressure and the screen friction of soils. So this is depending on basically uh, on type of soil only. Earlier code was on type of foundation also, but still there is some uh, typo there. And it is only depending on type of soils only. So there are three types of soils mentioned in this code. One is rock or hard soil. Then second is medium or stiff soils. And then type C is soft soils. These types of soils has been defined later in table two. But before we discuss table two, Let's say for these three types of soil, A, which is in general rock or hard soils, you can increase percentage increase in allowable bearing pressure by 50%. If your foundation is passing through type B soil, then it, uh, the increase if you, when you consider earthquake load should be 25%. But if your foundation is on the soft soil, then there should be no increase in uh, for bearing pressure irrespective of type of foundation. So first of all, this is uh, depending on type of soil. For determining that uh, this is classified in four types as given in table two, which we are going to discuss. In soft soil, no increase shall be applied in any pressure because such instruments cannot be restricted by increasing the pressure. So as we've seen here, that increase percentage increase in case of soft soil is zero. Now below this table in the code, there are nodes which we will go very quickly. First of all, the net bearing pressure shall be determined in accordance with IS 6403 or IS 1888-888. So whatever the, so the net pressure is determined, and if you are considering the earthquake load, then according to table one, the uh, net daily pressure can be increased for medium and rock, so rock size. Then only corrected values of N shall be used when for determining N is coming later. If any increase in net bearing pressure has already been permitted for forces other than seismic forces, the increase in allowable bearing pressure when seismic forces is also shall not exceed the limits. So that means, suppose due to some other consideration, you have already increased the net bearing pressure of the soil, then total increase in any case, uh, whether you consider this earthquake forces or not, this should, uh, this should not go be, be, uh, when you consider earthquake forces. Then total increase should not be above this limit, that 25 and 50. So suppose already due to some reason in the first type of soil, you have already considered 25% increase in our soil. Then another 25 can be considered when you consider earthquake 
Then the despite the uh, desirable meaning corrected field values fan shall be as specified in this table. What this table says? This table is based on seismic zones. So if your site is in seismic zone third, four, and five, then in case of for depth below ground level, which is less than five meter and more than 10 meter, then n values, minimum l values should be between 15 and 25. That means if your uh, site is lying in this third, fourth, and fifth zone, up to five meters should be below ground level, minimum n values is for the for earthquake condition should be 15. And if you are going beyond 10 meters down, then it should be 25. These values for second seismic zone is 10 and 20. And what are the seismic zones which are going to come like? So now the issue is here between 5 to 10 meter, the linear interpolation can be used, and below 10 meter depth, then it should be the flat value, the minimum value. So we can say that these are the minimum n values. But suppose if these n values are not available, in that case, if swells of lower n values are encountered, then those sites in these tables. Then suitable ground improvement technique shall be adopted to achieve these values. Alternatively, deep pile foundations should be used, which are anchored in strong data underlying the soil layers that do not meet the power requirements. Piles should be designed for lateral loads, neglecting lateral resistance of those soil layers, which are liable to. If suppose the piles are passing through the liquefiable soil layers, then determine the pile capacity, load carrying capacity of the pile. Those liquefied layers should be neglected. Next, Indian Standard Course IS1498 or IS2131 may be referred for soil rotation and corrected N values and be determined by applying the correction factor Cn for effective or burden pressure, sigma V0, using relation N equal to Cn into N1, where N1 is the uncorrected SPT value and Cn is the correction to be applied for over burden pressure, which is can be applied using this relation. Root PA divided sigma of zero effective. Uh, so, and the value of CN, maximum value of CN is where uh, a cap is put, should not be more than 1.7. So, if from this formula, if you are getting the value of CN less uh, up to 1.7 or less, then it's fine. Otherwise, suppose if you get a higher value than 1.7, then CN should not be taken more than 1.7. In this equation, PA is the atmosphere pressure, and continue with that. What you have when you want to use this table, which is table under node 4, then for using this table, the value of n to be considered shall be determined as below. For isolated footing, it should be below the base of the footing. You need to find the average value of the n below, starting from the base of the footing to the up to two times the depth or width of the footing. Then in the second case, for raft foundation, also it is the same. Uh, that is from starting from the base of the footing up to two times the width. But in case of pile foundation, then it will be uh, below the pile tip up to the two times the end of the pile. And for group pile foundations, again, bottom tip of pile group to the width of the pile, uh, to twice the width of the pile group should be considered. For well foundation, it is similar to pile foundation. That is starting from bottom tip of well to depth of bottom tip of well plus twice the width of well, two times of the width of the well. So that much zone should be considered, and accordingly you can determine the value of n. Now coming to that, uh, when we continue with this uh, uh, in reference to table four, where the minimum prescribed n values are given. But suppose if you have soil deposit which consists of summer's loose sands and soils which are falling under classification as P, that is uh, means basically poorly graded sand. With corrected standard penetration test values n, which is less than 15 in seismic zone third, fourth, and fifth, and less than 10 in seismic zone second. In that case, the second caused by earthquake ground motion may cause liquefaction or accessing total and differential sediments. And such sites should be avoided preferably for locating new structures and should be avoided for locating, stu locating structures of important buildings. So, first of all, if you have some sites where the where n values are less. If uh, less than let's say 15 in seismic zone third, fourth, and five, and less than 10 in seismic zone second, then we should avoid those sites for construction 
or otherwise we need to use the ground improvement as said here. And this is particularly applicable for new projects or for uh, locating distances for important projects. If that is not possible, then in that case, otherwise settlements need to be investigated and appropriate methods are looked of compaction or stabilization proceed and values indicated in number four of these treatments. Alternatively, the pi foundation may be adopted and anchored at as well below the underlying soil layers, which are likely to liquefy or undergo excessive settlements. So here, one way that we should try to avoid this is but if you can't avoid, then we need to check the settlement that they should be within the permissible limit. And uh, uh, if it's not, in that case, we need to uh, stabilize the soil so until you receive achieve the n values as mentioned in the table. Also, for marine clay layers and other sensitive clay layers, which are known to liquefy, undergo excessive settlement or even collapse owing to low shear strength of the soil. Such soils will need special treatment according to site conditions. And that is, we need to see the table too. And another issue is simplified method is given in another app for evaluation of liquefied potential uh, for designing before you design for foundations. So let's see what is given in table two. Table two is nothing but it gives the, uh, so, uh, for using table one, you need the classification of the end in table two. Uh, the soils are classified under four categories, not three only. Type A, Type B, and Type C. Type A is raw or hard soils. Type B is medium or soft soils, and Type C is soft soils. So these three types, A, B, C, are the same as given in Table One. But one more type is D is added here. Let's talk about D first. D is for unstable, collapsible, liquefiable soil. So for type D, it requires site study and special treatment according to site conditions. So special treatment will require for type D. So this that, that will be beyond the scope of this, uh, the code which has been given. But let's say for type A, type B, and type C, how they are defined first of all. Type A is well-graded gravels or well-graded sand, that is, it could be ZW or GSW, both is less than 5% passing through 75 micron seeds. So it is micron, here it is not MO. And then well uh, graded gravel, sand mixture with or without fines. Then poorly graded sand as P or clay sand all having N above 30. So if you have N, first of all, the value of N should be greater than 30. And type A will be normally well graded gravels or well graded sands, but not uh, you, if you have poorly graded sand or clay sand, then the one need to make sure that the value of n is above 30. Then you can consider uh, if it is n value is above 30, then, uh, then in that case we can consider this is the type B. But if n is not 30, then it goes to type B, provided the n is between 10 and 30. And this type B is applicable for poorly graded sense or poorly graded sense with gravel with little or no fines having n between 10 and 30. Then this, uh, this is also applicable to for clay sites for the low compressibility. Type B, for the type B, you require that uh, either it could be silt ML or it could be clay CL. But for type C, uh, is applicable for all soft soils other than SP, which have n less than 10. In case of n values less than 10, and the various possible soils are uh, sills and clay of intermediate and high compressibility. So if you have intermediate compressibility or high compressibility, it will fall under type C. It could be silt or it could be clay, so it could be MI, MS, CI, CH, a combination of those, those so that it would fall under type C, that is soft soil. Type D we have already discussed. So accordingly, whether your soil is falling between type A, type B, type C, then you can determine that uh, uh, that which which uh, type need to be used in table one. Now, continuing with that, uh, one of the most important part of the uh, this uh, IS 1893 that it defined design acceleration spectrum uh, or design acceleration spectrum. This gives you the design horizontal seismic coefficient AH for a structure. Uh, this A, what is AH? AH is nothing but design horizontal seismic coefficient. And this is simply given by Z by 2, S A by G, 
R by R. So Z, Z is called here zone factor. This is given in table three. S A by Z is basically your this. Uh, uh, S A by Z is basically spectral expression, which is given in that. I is impedance factor given in IS1893 parts 1 to 5 for the corresponding structures. When not, not mentioned, the minimum value of I shall be taken as here. It is not mentioned. So I impedance factor should be taken 1.5 for critical and lifeline structures, 1.2 for business continuities, and 1 for the rest of the structures. So I impedance factor is selected, the add zone factor is given. And before we move ahead, for designing the seismic force, the country is classified in four seismic zones, which is shown in this figure. Figure, you may be most of you may be aware about the seismic zoning of the country. Here you have zone highest zone seismic zone five, all of the northeast, Andaman Nicobar Islands, and then some part of the Bihar. That is basically North Bihar. Then parts of Uttarakhand. Where Pithoragar Almora is there, then part of the Himachal Pradesh, Mandi, then part of JNK, that is capital city, and then you have in the Bhuj, uh, Kach also, in the Bhuj region, it is basically Kach region of Gujarat. Uh, here also, this is in Sesame Zone 5, where the earthquake of 2001 is tried. So this, and then green line is here, that green line is saying seismic zone 4. So for example, Delhi, Nerodon, Rukhi, all are falling in seismic zone 4. Okay. So we continue with this. So according to, there are, you know, you may be aware, there are four zones only, second, third, fourth, and fifth. There is no first zone. As seismic zone factor for second zone is 0 0.10, for third seismic zone is 0.16, fourth is 0.24, and finally, Highest seismic zone has a zone factor 0.36. So this was table three. Now in this equation, here z by 2, s a by g. So we already discussed about z and i importance factor. What is r? R is called this is response reduction factor, which is given in IS1893 parts 1 to 5 for the corresponding structures. So whichever code you require, it the values are given, they are response. Then SA by Z in this case is called design acceleration coefficient for different soil types. Normalized with P ground acceleration corresponding to natural period P of structure. So considering the natural period P of the structure, SA by Z, this is design horizontal acceleration coefficient, is determined. And this is uh, a uh, coefficient uh, and this is normalized value of P ground acceleration. So that means. To convert S A by Z into S A, we multiply by P ground acceleration. It shall be as given in parts 1 to 5 for IS 1893 for the corresponding 5% damping given by expressions. So this is like S A by Z value can be determined from this expression, but rather than using this expression, let's come straight forward to the figures. There are two methods uh, suggested by S1893 for response spectrum. One is called spectra for equality static method, which is shown here, and another is design acceleration coefficient, S A by Z, which is corresponding to 5% damping. So both have the damping in the system is same. Both are quoted on natural period and both define the value of S A by Z. Now, in this case, S A by Z, what is the difference between these two? There are three curves here in this uh, response spectrum and these three curves are for different types of soils. The lowest one is for type first, that is rock hard soil, medium, uh, this middle curve is for type second, that is medium soil, and the top curve is for type third, soft soil, which is uh, like, you know, that, uh, that the soft soil is the okay, concern. And you could see, when you consider the soft soil, the value of S Y G is maximum here not here that means even after uh, certain period this is the same level so what you have here but in this case uh, another figure which is for response spectrum method you could see that th this is start from value one all the three curves start from value one and then they become two, uh, 2.5 so let's see what are the location here so if you see the data are given here 
this value from where this uh, the curves are getting reduced it is 0 0.4 0 0.55 and 0 0.67 so these are the numbers listed here while for this case again this rest of the part is same only there is a difference between this and this is related to uh, you have this one and then multiple so if you see here this is 0.1 up to 0 0.1 second for irrespective of type soil, this remains this 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 point belong to 0 0.1 second. I can pull this. This is related to this tip is related to 0 0.1 second. Zero point one second. And this 0 0.1 second is irrespective of type of soil. In fact, up to this point. All the curves are going together, and after that they started diverging. So these points we have already discussed that this is the point four. This value was point one. This is point four. This is point five five and point six seven. So this way you have like you know that this flat curves. Uh, let me erase this one because it's causing. So what you have here is basically you have response spectrum and one is using equivalent studying method and what is done for a given structure we find that it's natural period and for the natural period we find the corresponding the value of assay by z and this assay by z is for five percent so we are done with this now continue with that for determine the correct spectrum to be used in the estimate of assay by z this is coming here then the type of soil in which the structure is placed shall be identified by the classification given in table 4. So in table 4, soil type first is rock or hard soil, soil type second is rock, medium or stiff soils, and soil type third is soft soils. So all soft, medium, and hard soil, all three soils have been covered. And in table 4, the value of N to be used shall be the weighted average of N soil layers from the existing ground level to 30 meters below the existing ground level. Level. As the n values of n shall be the corrected values. So first of all, you will be using corrected values of n here. Let's discuss first for soil type first for hard soil. So continue this. So what you have here? This table is similar to what you have in table two. You have three soil type here: rock or hard soil, medium or stiff soils, and soft soils. And the definition is more or less same. But uh, you can see here this well graded gravels or sand both with less than five percent passing 75 micrometer c that means basically it is micron uh, and that should be corrected in the last so and another for the rock side we have well graded sand mixtures polygraded sand polygraded sand so polygraded sand so gravels as well. so if any of these things are uh, encountered then it can be what I can suggest here that uh, if you have uh, this, uh, the value of n is above 30, then you can use rock hard soils. But if it is between 10 and 30, then medium or stiff soils should be used. Finally, for soft soil, the value of n is less than 10, and rest of the things its applicability is for basically intermediate and high compressibility soils. So these are applicable, but if intermediate is low, then this method soft soils may not be applicable. So this was about all about uh, uh, this individual code for that time. Now let's discuss uh, what is the provision given by American Society of Civil Engineers, and uh, that is part seven. Here the foundation shall be designed to resist the forces that develop and to accommodate the moments imparted to the structure and foundation by the design ground motions. The dynamic nature of the forces, the expected ground motion, the design basis for strength and energy capacity of the structure, and the dynamic properties of the soil shall be included in the determination of the foundation design. So when you have foundation design, in that case, these all need to be included. That is the recommendation of case. Continue with that. They have uh, the in ASC account, the load deformation characteristics has been given. The linear load deformation behavior of foundation shall be represented by an equivalent linear stiffness 
using soil properties that are compatible with soil strength levels associated with the design of the machine. So that means it is basically what you can say the equivalent linear model of soil, where you keep updating the shear modulus and damping ratio of the soil as the level of strength changes. But uh, here now it is saying that this is the final because there is no change in the strength. So that, that we need to use the strength compatible shear modulus Z and the association compatible shear velocity Vs for the emission of the equivalent linear stiffness. Then a 50% increase and decrease in stiffness shall be incorporated in dynamic analysis unless smaller variation can be justified based on field measurements of dynamic or direct measurement of dynamic formation stiffness. The largest value of response shall be used in the design. So first of all, 50% increase or decrease is possible for dynamic analysis. But as said earlier also, that suppose it is done, uh, some, some in, uh, there is some increase, already some increase in so uh, in stiffness, then the total should not exceed 50% when you consider the earthquake load, even for very good Now, coming to this reduction of foundation overturning, Overturning effect of the soil foundation interface are permitted to be reduced by 25% for foundation of structures that satisfy both of the following conditions. The first condition is simple. The structure is, should be designed in accordance with the kernel linear force analysis. Then the structure is not an inverted pendulum or cantilevered column type. So that means both of these aspects need to be looked after that. And Otherwise, in fact, the soil foundation interface are permitted to be reduced by 10% for foundations of st structures designed in accordance with the model analysis. So if any structure is designed according to model analysis, then we can use it. Now, coming to the nominal strength suggested by the ASC, the nominal foundation geotechnical capacity QNS shall be determined using any of the following methods. What are the methods? First step is presumptive load bearing values by a registered design professional based on geotechnical site information investigation that include field and laboratory testing to determine soil classification and as required acting passive and, and address soil strength parameters. So uh, this is basically kind of a you know that fast track. So if you have a registered design professional based on geotechnical site investigation. In that case, you can have uh, you can have this the determined soil classification and active passive uh, soil strength parameters. The third is minus two testing of prototype formations. So first is presumptive, second is talking about the registered design profession, and third one is uh, testing of site testing of prototype formations. Nominal strength values are permitted to be based on either a limitation of maximum expected foundation deformation by the nominal strength that is associated with an error method. So, this can be explained here. For nominal strength, soil strength parameters are for competent soils that they do not undergo strength degradation under seismic loading. In that case, strength parameters for seismic loading conditions shall be used to compute nominal foundation geotechnical tests. And for seismic design, unless increased, seismic strength values based on site conditions are provided by a registered design profession. Continuing that, for sensitive cohesive soils or saturated cohesive soils, the potential for earthquake induced strength degradation cell be used. So these are the protocols, uh, this ASC. Then further, the ASC courses, the resistance factor shall be used for vertical, lateral, and local resistance, all formation types. Nominal foundation geotechnical capacities QNS shall be multiplied by the resistance factor of pi, which is shown in the table, or alternatively, a vertical resistance factor of pi equal to 0 0.80 is permitted to be used when the normal strength is determined by its testing for the right foundation. So these are the restrictions. And in this table, one is for vertical resonance, another is lateral resonance. Now, pile soil interaction should be considered. And pile moment shears and lateral directions used for design shall be established, considering the interaction of the shaft and soil. Where the ratio of the depth of embedment of the pile to the pile diameter or width is less than or equal to six, that means depth of embedment is less than the uh, this uh, ratio of uh, 
less than six times of the ratio of uh, length of the file to uh, divide by the diameter of, uh, of the file. That is L by D is the file is performed to be assumed to be flexibly reduced with respect to the soil. Then pile groove effects. Pile groove effects from soil on lateral nominal strength shall be included, where pile diameter center to center spacing in the direction of lateral force is less than eight pile diameter soil. In that case, pile groove effects on vertical nominal strength shall be included, where pile center to center spacing is less than three times pile diameter or always. Continue with this. Uh, then there is a provision for requirements for foundation liquid fiber cells. And he has been aware that soil strength is lost when it is subjected to liquid motion. In MCG, uh, MCG earthquake mot uh, motions, the structure shall be designed to accommodate, to accommodate the effects of liquid motion in accordance with the requirements given in the sections. Then foundation design shall be, uh, should be support gravity and design earthquake loads using the reduced size soil bearing capacity. Considering the effects of introduction caused by MCG earthquake motion, the anticipated lateral spreading different values and shall be permitted to include the mitigating effects of any plant ground movement on the site. So naturally, these, these are the measures required if you have the issue of Continue this. Uh, you, these are the references which are used for this uh, presentation. First is IS 1893 2016. That is the criteria for activation design of structures, part 5, published in 19, recently 2016. Then IS 6403 in 1981 is also a core practice for determination of gaining capacity of cellular foundation. By, uh, this is published also by BIS. Then ASC guide, guidelines, ASC. SCI 7 Minimum design loads and associated criteria for buildings and other structures is given in score, and this is for evidence that is civil engineers. So, with this, I thank you very much for your kind attention.